Welcome to episode one of Wrong Song. This is episode one of. Exaggerate. Why did you call me here? I, I, I want you to go into my hole, Ness. I've got something in there you need to see. Um, the, the big hole you've ripped into your floor? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's the only hole in here. <laughs> um, okay, let's go. Yay! But you'll be no match for my robot shell, Frankenstein. Mark two. Um, Frank, w what is it, dude? Frank, we haven't built the Mark two yet. Uh, what? I, th I thought you guys took care of that the other day. Yeah, man, but, but Jenny was sick, and Gerald had to buy flowers for his mom's birthday. Uh, are you serious? Well, then, what about the prototype, man? The Mark one. Dude, you can't use that. Why not? Ain't it ready? Uh, no man, we built that thing out of potatoes. Huh? Why would you do that? Kenny's dad is a farmer. It was free material. You guys are dolts! Great, so now I just, uh, I guess I'm just gonna have to be super friendly to this guy. So yes, you wanna go? Our first question comes from Handish2000 who writes, What part of EB did you think was hardest to pull off in the Fab Radio format? Probably well, the part edited. where we were trying to get through to the to the listeners that there were colors, but we didn't want to say what colors they were, but we wanted to purvey them, so we were jumping around the subject. Like, well, it's kind of like trees, or did we never do that? Well, it was like uh, in Moonside when like we told the listeners it looked weird because Ness was like, "Wow!" and that was like all they had to go by. There was That's probably true. something, but honestly, after doing this for a year, I can't remember anything. I can't even remember the last episode, so... So this is going to make this a pretty <laughs> um, informative interview, with that in mind. <laughs> I so personally thought the hardest part was, by far, working in that ridiculous backstory about Fobbies and Sweet Tea. That wasn't part of you. Yeah, but that's not a part of you, B. That's just us making stuff up. Crouching Mouse asks... Does just one person write the fab script, or do you all collaborate on it? Just Chaz. This is actually pretty, pretty interesting, and I do want to comment on this as like a serious question. Because like, I see a lot of people doing like their own radio plays today, and like they have like one person doing all the writing and all that stuff, and that's not how we do it at Fab at all. And like, I don't know, like if there's anything that I would like to inspire other people to do while doing these radio plays is to like make it more of a team effort with like friends that you really like and to like actually all collaborate on the script and not just have it as one person because I don't know just having friends all together it makes more funny things than if you're just trying to think of it yourself the friends you really like as opposed to the <laughs> friends that you made <laughs> I didn't mean it like that I know yeah. but it was great um no. you know uh I don't know Ben is right. It's kind of a, a grab bag of people writing different stuff, and it, it all becomes one script, so it's kind of cool. Basically how the scripting process works is that, well, it's been done a few a few different ways over the year. Year. <laughs> a year. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, there's been times where one person would write, like the filler crap and then everyone else would throw in like ideas and then it all just kind of get conglomerately written there's other times where we've separated it into sections and it's like you write this to this you write this to this and we all start writing and that's worked we finish scripts really fast that way it flows a little differently because someone will be going somewhere with something and then when it just kind of goes somewhere else but, but then those two are probably the biggest things we've done I'd say that last one afterwards like that's when you like all per bring it all together and then like everyone looks at what everyone else wrote and, like you comment on it and make changes and, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. And most of the time, most of the time after we're done writing, we go back and read through it. Sometimes in voices, and it's produced some of the funniest stuff we've ever done, but we don't ever record it. So you managed to get past my men. Fortunately, you'll never beat my ultra super ultra mama tango foxtrot martial arts. The same martial arts that the teenage mutant and ninja turtles used to defeat Shredder. Prepare to be tamed. <laughs> what? Wow. You, you sure proved me wrong. I thought that surely 30 years in the forest would allow me to take down a 13-year-old kid, but apparently I've been eating too many donuts. I tell you, things have been pretty slow as of late. It's time like this that kids should be playing Nintendo games. Anyway, it's pretty obvious to me. You want to go to Tucson? I can see it in your eyes. Uh, actually, no. There's no real reason for me to go there. Uh, are you sure? Because, like, the, the plot of this game will only progress if you leave on it. Well, well, how would I know that? Well, wait. You haven't gotten the dream yet? Dream? What, what are you talking about? Hold it, dang spoilers. Sorry, kid. I won't say any more. Seriously, I know how you kids get. Just give me a call ahead. I can smell money, and you have some, and I need it. Man, this tree is so strong. I know I can take it, though. Oh my god, I'm on fire! Hiroshi asks questions directed to each member of the cast. To X-Fish, she asks, How embarrassing was it to do the Nintendo Goes to McDonald's video? Um, not at all. <laughs> right, because it wasn't your car that was going to get kicked out of the city. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I was I was driving Chaz's automobile uh, at the time. But, I don't know. I don't have a problem doing stuff like that. No. You don't. As you can find out by going to mesteven.com slash... Slash Earthbound. Okay. Hooray advertising. <laughs> <laughs> to Catan, what inspired you to play Trisha in Venus? Well, when I was <laughs> yeah, born, good. a female... No, no, that's not what happened. Um, <laughs> I have a freakishly high voice, is what it is. Yeah. And uh, it just sort of lends itself to doing girlish characters. So, actually, the story behind Venus. Yeah. We were actually going to give Venus to somebody else. We're not going to mention his name because he doesn't even deserve to have his name mentioned on Fabies and Borange. Someone who really spot. begged to be on Fabies and Borange, Fabies or Borange a lot. And like, he, a lot. He did. And, like, we gave him a role and he was like, nope. So, and, like, we even had a joke that we forgot to take out of the script that was supposed yeah, to be, like, Yeah, that I specifically to told you to take out of the script <laughs> if he wasn't going to do right it. Now, but, um, so, like, at the very last minute when we were waiting on that person, like, sending recordings for Venus's song, he was like, no, I don't want to do this. And I was like, well, you're stupid. And that's what happened. So I, I have Venus stood up. You did all over the place. Actually, um, before... Like, we even thought about, like, adding more people to the Bobby's of Orange crew. Like, I was under the impression that I would assume myself as the role of Paula, just because, you know, it was just me and Steven at first, and we weren't really thinking about adding more people. So, yeah. I was, I was expecting to do a girl voice somewhere along the line, so here it is. To Matt Cab, how does it feel to be a guy who is famous for portraying a female character? Have many people mistaken you for a woman? Well, <clears throat> you know... All the time. I do. Shut up! You're male? Did you... It's happened a couple times. Uh, online, offline, and in real life. Um, and it's okay to be famous for portraying a female character, because I think that I do the role splendidly. And, uh... Yeah. Fame is fame. Baller! Mm. (laughs) Baller! And now, a question for Lawahi. What's it like having to sound perpetually happy all the time? It sucks. Sephiroth asks, What do the four of you guys do to get into character? I just kind of start speaking in a high voice, and then the character personality just comes with it. 
I, uh, <clears throat> give myself a lobotomy. I, I eat chicken legs. <laughs> I, uh... Wear a dress. Wear a, a pretty dress. Omni Gigas asks, What was the funniest part of doing Fobbies or Borange? Jew shooter. <laughs> <laughs> the funnest? Funny. Uh, this is a yeah, hard funny. question. Oh, funnest uh, is different than uh, funniest. You say funnest or funniest? Oh, funnest. It's funnest. It says funnest. I'm just an idiot. What was um, the funnest part? There was not one part that was fun. <laughs> it's all been incredibly lame and boring. Yeah. I gotta say, one of the funnest parts have been, as previously mentioned, the first script read-throughs, as we figure out that some lines are just terrible and misread some lines. And It's a shame that, like, you know, that's not something we can have you guys experience, because I'm an idiot and I never remember to record. Yeah, way to go. Shut up. So, in answer to your question, the funnest part of doing Fobbies or Orange is something that you will never be able to experience. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think one of the best parts of Five Was a Born is doing all the music. Because we've had some pretty trippy songs in Five Was a Born. Although you're not the one who had to assemble them and put them together when people were being procrastinators and getting their tips in at the last possible second. Just saying. Gee, Ben, does this story have an ending? Not yet. We're not done with the show yet. <laughs> uh, what happened? Wait a minute, this isn't a hospital. You, you got the second sanctuary spot without me, didn't you? How could you do that? That's my favorite part of the melody. Well, you were just dying in junk all the time, and I wasn't really into paying out the wazoo to fix you up all the time. Besides, the moment was cool, and we talked about games for a little while. Well, fine. You know what? I didn't want to be here anyways. Video games suck, and I hate them, and I hate you, and I hate explained trees. Oh, well, I'm sorry about that last one, because we totally got to deal with that now. He knows Al Gore? That's so sweet. Did you know we're all going to die because of global warming? Uh, Paula, who's your friend? Ness, this is my acquaintance, Trisha. Her little brother goes to the, her, you know, the preschool my parents run. We've known each other for way too long. Really. Way too long. So, like, how did you guys get in? My daddy had to buy me another front row ticket after I lost my backstage pass. I think it might have fallen out on the way here. Radiation asks, If Strawberry Tofu never made that awesome post, would you have done a radio play anyway? If so, what would you guys have called it? This is technically one question, screw you. Meaning, like, Strawberry Tofu's post of the Fabies are pink and Fabies are barnish thing. Um, I... We actually, if you listen to the first episode or the pilot, the name of the show was Adventures in Earthbound. What is so, that? like, Bobby's of Orange had nothing to do with us making the show. It was just the name we decided that was better than Hot Earth Time. Here's what happened. We made the first episode. We were very depressed. We were going to cancel everything. But then we saw the magical post. Fobbies are born, and we knew that we had to continue under that name. That's not what happened. I, that's how I remember it. That's, that's not even close to what happened. Also, if you listen to the pilot, he'll tell you the weather at your landing destination. <laughs> I like the nuts. That's what. Nope. Anyway, next question. <laughs> Boo 95, Boo 95 writes, Why did you, as in the whole cast of Steve and Martin, Ben and Muhammad, decide to use the voices you use for the characters? Um, Ness's voice comes from the fact that I can only do that voice. <laughs> and I was um, dropped on my head as a child, so we have, we can relate. A lot. Uh, well, if you've listened to episode four... <laughs> you, know, you know that it actually took me a little while to fine-tune Paula's voice. And, uh... Yes! This is Paula! Yes. <laughs> I'm a friend you've never met before! That's because I, for I forget. And I thought that would sound cool, and it just didn't. So I decided to go for whatever was easiest to just be able to do on the fly. And that was just, like, making my voice higher and kind of annoying-sounding. Anyway, I just want to comment on, uh... 
Paula about the the new well not the new Paula but the current Paula that's stuck. I know one person like completely hated the show because Paula was an evil person until I told him this. So hopefully, if you hate the show, you won't anymore. <laughs> anyway, um, like the original idea for Paula to be a, a mean person was because as a kid when playing the game, I totally thought Paula was mean. And like, Why? Like, I don't know, just her word choice seemed really bullyish. Like, I, just how, like, blunt she was with things. She was just like, yeah, now go kick butt, like, I know you can. Like, she was like, we also forgot to, to point it. out that Ben couldn't read as a child. And he made it. <laughs> <laughs> I could read, I just couldn't read in context. And I thought Paula was mean. Okay. Anyway, um, for Jeff. Uh, originally, like, Jeff was gonna be like a boy it is, and Lloyd's are not Christmas or something. At least that's, like, that's like the cop-out idea I had for it. But no one liked it. And I didn't really yeah. either. <laughs> then, like, people were like, he should just be completely stoic and, like, not care about anything. And then, like, I thought that was an okay idea, but, like, I felt like people wouldn't like it or something. But I lost that argument, and Jeff became Jeff. Nightshade asks, what inspired you and how to recreate the characters, Ness having ADD, Paula being a cigarette addict, etc., and did you give much work on how they should sound? Especially for Pooh's voice, it doesn't sound natural at all, and yet it's so cool to listen to Lawahi speak with that voice. I'm not entirely sure why I sound this way, I just kind of do, and for some reason I could switch between normal voice and character voice really quickly. For example, I could speak like this, and it will just be like this, and I could change voices quite often, and it, it can get confusing if you know what I mean, yeah. Oh, you don't have to um, all the time, honey. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't really remember, like, when we started. I think me and Ben, like, when, when we first started really early on, even, like, the first or, not, well, not the first episode. It was probably the second one. We started talking about how we should change the characters up. And we knew that we were going to deal with Ness for a while. And I think we both kind of agreed that Ness should be retarded. <laughs> Yep. Wasn't like I'm pretty sure that's how it went. Possible episode, or a possible series title. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, before Five Years of Orange was just going to be Ness is retarded. But uh, <laughs> we changed that after <laughs> the parents of Captain Falcon got angry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes! I'm a friend you've never met before. My name is Paula. I need you to help me, Ness. I don't know where I am, but I can hear running water in the distance. Oh, please help me, Ness. Holy crap, what was that? Hmm, so, uh, what can I do for you boys? We need the master key to the lockers in the locker room so Jeff can steal everybody's stuff and escape the school in the name of chivalry and love. Oh, well, that's no problem at all. Personally, I only ever really liked you guys anyway, so I'm all down for stealing everyone's stuff. Just just make sure it doesn't get back to me somehow. Well, who else has the master key? Oh, just me. Well, then how would you don't, don't, really get... Don't, don't worry about it. No. This key doesn't work. What? This key doesn't work. Wait, what? This key, it doesn't work. The key doesn't work? Why? It's bent. Uh, hey guys, are, are you having problems with that key? The key doesn't work. Husky Washu asks, If you could go back and change one thing about Fab, is there one thing you wish you would have done differently? We should have stopped that magic can. No, that's a terrible idea. Should have stopped in on it. <laughs> well, actually, I can know. I can I say something? Yes. Uh, since this is the last episode that's going to be coming up, uh, I guess I should say, I don't know. Fabi's of Orange as a whole, I've been able to incorporate the ideas I really liked that I had into it in some way. But originally, there was a character I wanted to have in Fabi's of Orange that never made it in, and. Uh, it was supposed to be Trisha's little sister, Tish, and I had all this stuff written up about her and how all this crap was going to go down. 
Whoa. And Tish was going to become Tish uh after Trisha leaves, and Paul was going to go crazy, and it was going to be hilarious. But it never happened. Wait, you didn't tell me like you actually wrote up a backstory for this person. You just like said you had the idea. No, I told you about it. <laughs> you were never like, Apparently, oh man, I wrote so a biography. And actually forgot and erased it from his memory, and that's the reason it's not in fact today. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys. Trish is like two. How can she have a little sister? She's not two. She's like I, I know. ten. Oh my god. Sorry, I burped. Honestly, looking back on everything. There's probably a lot that could have made it better, but I don't care, so nothing. <laughs> I would have, like, you know, not excluded certain enemies. I don't know. Like, some people really like, like, they have favorite enemies that, I don't know, they like for some reason, like, Foppies. And I feel especially since, like, you know, the title includes Foppies, like, you would at least make a mention about their counterpart, but, like, we completely ignored them. We skipped a lot of enemies, and we skipped a lot of the battles just for the fact that it's repetitive, and we use too many Shaq Fu sound effects, and it's kind of boring. <laughs> we do it in uh, Lloyd's. <laughs> oh, crap, it's a four-nipple bearded man. I'm a rhino, I'm an alligator. <laughs> I got that guy. I killed him dead, the son of a gun. With my gun, tweet, tweet, shut up, friggin' bird. Big Kid 7 asks... Do you ever find yourself slipping into your character voices by accident? <laughs> All the time. <laughs> yeah. I often call Ben up on Skype and say, Hey, good dog! How are you doing here today? <laughs> All the time. If I started slipping into a poo voice randomly in conversation, I'd probably get shot. So no, I don't. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, for me, all I have to do is like be in a bad mood, and I can just talk like this, and then I'll be like. Uh, yeah, that's kind of like with Paula, except for when I get excited. Sometimes <laughs> I'm talking Paula voice. No, I can honestly say that I've never talked like Ness. <laughs> I mean, Ness is pretty much your voice, but higher pitched. I'm sure you've done it before. Chimera the Ultimate asks, "This is to everyone. How do you all decide who would play which character?" Yeah, there's a game called Russian Roulette. Uh, actually, I think I have an answer for this one. Thanks. <laughs> um, let's see here. How did you all decide? Who well, I think, wasn't Steven always going to be Ness? Yes. Just because. And, uh... Like, the original know. idea <laughs> was, like... Answer. The original <laughs> idea was <laughs> seriously going to be Steven is Ness, and I am everyone else. That's how That's the it was for a while. Show. No, that was how it was for a while. Yeah, for like three episodes, it was just Steve was Ness and you were everybody else. Yeah. And then I came in, because didn't I I am you once? And I was like, hey, if you need something to be Paul, just hit me up. And then you actually did. Yes. That's how it happened. This is before I hated you. Yeah. <laughs> there were like some drama things going down that like, Luahi almost couldn't be Pooh because of yeah. like complications and stuff. Like, Black Leader was gonna be Pooh at some point, but then, like... Not Goahi that they told like, me that, but... We did tell you! <laughs> nope. No. Who? You're not You're not told if you're gonna be on Fab. You're chosen. You're just chosen. <laughs> Wait, no. Okay, we had a bunch of ideas for Pooh because we didn't know what we were gonna do, right? Because right. at first he was, like, not gonna talk at all. Like, we didn't have to hire anybody. <laughs> and then the other idea was he was just gonna talk in Japanese. So... That's a stupid idea. <laughs> <laughs> Which were both kind of bad ideas, but uh, the, I don't know. I guess we just—I don't know. I wasn't part of the choosing process. Lawahi just kind of showed up one day. But well, we kind of had Lawahi in mind for like the entire time, but it was never. Yeah, like Lawahi was like always this first option. We kept <clears throat> coming up with other ideas, and we wanted Lawahi because um, his voice—he has like the Middle Eastern voice anyway. So we were like, hey, we could totally get him to do poo. And he was down for it, and then Ben did something to make him get grounded or something one night, and then we were like, oh crap, he's not going <laughs> to Oh my god, that is what I happened. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and he was not able to do that, and that's why we ended up doing Ask a Fubi, isn't it? Yeah. I, I that's, that that's is why, why we did Ask a Fubi. <laughs> did we have the script already? Yes, we did. <laughs> yeah. 
That's right. I remember that day. Why are we bringing this up? This is a bad time. So this is uh, this is Ben's fault. Ask Fooby is Ben's fault. Um, <laughs> I don't like to ask a Fooby. Nobody instead else of ask a Fooby, we're supposed to have the next episode, whatever that was. So and then See, he was able to come next week, and September. he's in there forever. The other thing is, uh, as far as minor and guest star characters go on the show, uh, a lot of times it's a matter of. Um, who happens to have that character's name on the forum. It's a very good way to get yourself on the show. Uh, yeah. Telling you that a little late at this point. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get like three people registering as Gygus now. <laughs> uh, and then of course for just normal bit parts that are going to be filled by one of the normal cast members, it's a matter of, alright, who doesn't speak very much next to this person? So they don't have yeah. to switch in and out of the character a lot. The only person we couldn't get to guest host was um, Tomato. We're going to put him on the spot. I'm not going to cut that out. Hey, Tomato. Well, you know, we we tried to contact him, and um, he was very polite and said he didn't want to do it, so I attacked him <laughs> um, as verbally as I could, and he completely disregarded everything I had asked. That's cool. We're still cool. Um, How do you know? I was really hoping that he would, he would do something because he was such a big fan of the show, but... Uh, that's fine. It's five days of Barnes behind the music. <laughs> this was before we all started smoking, smoking weed. <laughs> Wait, this was before? <laughs> yeah. This is way before. This was like two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> so in the last two weeks, we all started smoking weed. <laughs> Trying to get get up for the sequel, Fab Three. Do you, do you know how many people are gonna take this seriously? Yeah, what? <laughs> like that we all started smoking weed in the last two weeks? Yes. I don't think anyone <laughs> A 15-year-old What was great is that we never told weed. each other. It was just such a coincidence. Like, one day we're like, man, I got something to say. I started smoking weed, and everyone's like, oh my god, me too. <laughs> yeah, that was yesterday. That was a great day. <laughs> <laughs> it's all happened yesterday. Skymorrow asks, did you have any idea Fab was going to be this popular? Um, I didn't. I hope it, well, like, I kind of wish today that it didn't. Um, you is know, it popular? Dumb. No, I'm sorry. Mm, people listen to this still? Yeah. Huh. That's not nice. why. Nope. None of us did, and anybody of us who says that we knew it was going to be this popular is a liar. Like, it was a thing that, like, Exus approached me on I Am one day. I was like, I want to be on your show so bad. That's not how it happened That's at all. Happened. Ben <laughs> came to me. <laughs> and Ben was like, Exus, you should be on my show. Because then my ratings would go up and I'd get promoted to gold DJ. I was like, man, I know you want the, the new badge, but I can't do it because my schedule's tight because I'm all blazinging. I don't know if that's worth. So then, anyway, I was cruising down the strip in my limo, and he called me on my cellular telephone that is platinum and bling and, and on my neck because I'm assuming that's where gangsters wear their cell phones. And I answered it, and he's like, "Yo, Xmas, I got a spot on on Friday, and I need you to do it for for Rizzle." See, here's like, where the story proves itself to be false because I was doing radio on Sundays at the time. I know you said Friday, and then you were like, "Man, I forgot that this is Sunday." And I was like, alright, it's cool. And then we did it, and then... What was the question? <laughs> yeah, popular. We knew it. Armored Frog asks, What do you think is the most important thing you have learned from doing this series? Brotherhood. Mm -mm. I've learned that... Earthbound is a game that fully fosters creativity even when you're butchering it. You know, one thing I've learned, and honestly, I knew this before. I knew that Earthbound had a really crappy story with, like, crappy character development. Yeah. But I, it, it's further cemented in, in my mind how much better <laughs> they could have done with the story and explaining, like, the characters and stuff. Because it's just like these sprites walking around on the screen. We breathed life into their nostrils. And apparently did a bad job. I think we did a good job. Well, you know, ever since the beginning I've been trying to explain to Ben that the characters just didn't bounce off of each other. <laughs> <laughs> 
and you know, we, we actually had a, a few group meetings about the bounciness of the characters, and um, and we, we came to the conclusion that maybe we should ask other people for help, and Radiation was one of the names that came up, because we knew he was such a good writer, writing such things as butts this and butts that. And um, as we were trying to decide if we should do that or not, we, we decided not to, and I really think that it's affected Fab's overall performance, and we could have done a lot better if we would have uh, sought help from the beginning. Maybe. You know how many people are going to believe you? <laughs> <laughs> Lord of Pastries asks, what is your favorite episode? I like the episode where we did the flashback back to Onet and the stuff part of the game that we skipped because of uh, Weed Man. That was what bought the episode for me. Um, any of the Lloyds are not Christmas episodes. The Lloyds are not Christmas does not count. Probably oh. the first episode that incorporated, like the first flashback episode, is probably the best episode. I don't yeah. remember what number that was. That was easily my answer, was episode 20, for a number of reasons. First, it was one of the ones where I started uh, majorly helping with the writing. Uh, it was, of course, my premiere as a guest, as... Dad leader, as he's now known, and Black Sesame Seed. Paula's not really new dad. Paula's old dad. It was Paula's new dad at the time. So we didn't really know where we were going with that. Uh, it had one of the best music clips we've done in Monkey Back. And also creation of one of the most important characters, I think, uh, in Earthbound history. Since he is the hero of Earthbound, right? He is. All right. I liked um, Captain Crunch the Vampire Slayer because I think that was the first episode we saw Trisha, and uh, I just remember there being a lot of funny moments in that episode. That was a good episode. It was also the first episode with a bonus track. Was it? What episode was that? Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh yeah, the Runaway Five Acapella. Ah, uh, true. I think my favorite episode is is pretty much any of them, any of the flashback episodes. So there's like three or four of them. Um, so 20 would be like one of them for sure. I don't know. I just think, honestly, that's the funniest thing in Fab is whenever it goes back to um, Southern Paula and her father. Um, it's some of the most ridiculous stuff, and none of it is from Earthbound. So the best part of Fab is stuff that wasn't even in the game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think the most recent flashback with the sweet tea and the um the fobbies um one of, one of my favorite parts is whenever uh mom just like I can't sir I drank it it's like bam you're dead <laughs> I don't know why I find that really funny so uh, I think without a doubt the best three characters in Fobbies or Orange are Southern Paula's dad Tommy and bus driver <laughs> and Tracy <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, Tracy's pretty good. Tracy's up there, too. The connecting themes of all of these characters is that they're not in Earthbound. Insert Sanctuary here. Oh, oh man, what's wrong? It's a traffic jam. And what do we do now? Dang! Detach the rear vehicle! De detach the rear vehicle? What? What? What rear vehicle? I think he was joking. They're not taking me seriously. I think our bus driver is sort of weird. Yeah, he makes me want to stay in the back of the bus. I'll lure these guys to the front. What's he doing? Ew, hopefully not what I think he's doing. I didn't expect to happen you uh, this. Listen, we have a favor to ask of you guys. Oh? What's that? We're, we're debating on which one of us is the true third strongest mole. Maybe you could fight each of us and let us know so we can finally put it to rest. Well, sounds fine to me. Okay, okay, that was pretty good. Uh, Lenny, get up, Lenny. Seriously, Lenny. <sighs> okay, well, screw him. Leroy, you're next. Let's do it. 
Banana Hero asks, has playing your character in Fab increased your attachment to them? Like, do you like them more than before? Um, one one thing I can say right off the bat is that whenever we did the uh, the recent Earthbound Funktastic gameplay, I was playing through it, and anytime any of the characters talked, and it's very very few times, but I can hear the our characters, like our guys, saying the lines. Well, um, I I don't know. Paul's always been one of my favorite characters, but uh, I've noticed after playing her in Fathers of Orange, whenever I see art of her. With blonde hair, I'm like, wait. Pretty sure she's supposed to have black hair. And I'm like, wait. Okay. Never mind. It's one. It's one bad thing about doing Fab, and for all the people that have listened to Fab, especially since the beginning, is that we have completely altered these people's views and our own views of Earthbound. Like, there's. Yeah. I mean, when I play through Earthbound, I have a Fab mindset. <laughs> <laughs> and if I go to explain something to somebody about Earthbound, I'm more than less going to slip something in there unknowingly about Fab and just not realize it because we've become so attached over a year of writing. And you recording. know, the Fobbies were at one point little white skinny things. <laughs> they killed Paula's dad. It's pretty much <laughs> yeah. Look at the map after you use PSI yeah. teleport and you're like, hey, wait a sec, why is Paula there? That's... Wait a minute. Jeff, where the heck is your teleport skill? Jeff! That's another reason episode 20 was the best episode. It <laughs> started so the whole war phenomenon. It's true. And Word Jam was shortly after that, and that was good. Not shortly, Word Jam was a little while after. Oh, really? The game was good. Daska asks, How long does it usually take to write the script for an episode, and who usually spends the most time working on the script? Well, it depends on how many 40 minutes water breaks it then takes. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I think the longest one had us up to like four in the morning once. It was nuts. We didn't well, even start yeah. that early. Or when early. when we started, uh, when we started Fab, and it was or Adventures in Earthbound, and it was just me and Ben. Um, we wrote them fast, like really fast, like probably half an hour to an hour. Yeah. They were done. They were also really short. Um, yeah. The script started to get longer, but even in like the first ten episodes, I remember them. We finished them really fast. Um, it wasn't until later, um, probably between episodes ten and twenty, where stuff started getting longer, and everything after twenty um, was just really ridiculously long. Like it was starting to take us like long periods of time, and it used to be where we would write them. Um, a few days before, and it got to the point where we were writing them the day before, and sometimes we were writing them the, the day of, which was bad. <laughs> yes. Um, it was not very hard to get off subject. <laughs> at, like, we we would be we'd start the script, and we'd be like, "All right, we'd not write like the beginning narrator part," and then we'd be like, "So, how was everyone's day?" <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I went to Burger King. Oh, really? Burger King is great. I love their chicken nuggets. Haha, <laughs> Nuggets is a funny song. Oh, Ranger really likes that. Yeah, Ranger made that post in that one topic. Yeah, that topic about the art. Yeah, I love art. Yeah, you want to talk about art? Sure, art's great. And we would just get off, off subject over and over and over again to the point where we would not finish stuff and be like, okay, you want to finish writing this tomorrow? It was bad, but <laughs> we, we've done pretty good lately. <laughs> Uh, Who cares? We're almost done. Say for the record, um, <clears throat> that's most of you and Beth. I was the one that was like, come on, guys. Oh, <laughs> hold up, hold up. Negative. <laughs> negative. You don't remember the Not days negative. back at Longwood when I would, like, scream at you guys and get really, like, stressed out and worried. And I was like, guys, come on. Stop messing around. We got a really episode. And then, like, that's, I think that's actually the reason that, like, we got Chaz can, in here one day. I can definitely like, say something about Martin that probably won't admit. Oh, um, what? Whenever we write, Martin at least one time leaves. <laughs> at least one he's, time. He says, I'll be right back. And he puts the call no, on he hold. will say, I'll be right back. And he'll be gone for about half an hour. He might come back and be like, sorry, on I went to this store to get food. <laughs> oh, you missed the, the writing process. Oh, sorry. Is the script done? <laughs> um, there was other times where Martin would be, he'd put it on hold, or he just wouldn't talk, and we'd be like, Martin. Martin, Martin finally pick up and he'd be like, what? And we're like, what were you doing? Oh, sorry, I was playing a game. <laughs> Martin, this is writing time. Oh, I'm sorry, I was playing a game. 
Hold on, I have to go get food from the store. <laughs> what a busy guy, what can I say? <laughs> Even better at the times he doesn't even say be right back. He'll just hold it and be gone forever. <laughs> that only happened like three times. <laughs> <laughs> Who's there? Patrick, is that you? No, Dad, it's your son. I know. I said Patrick. Oh, Jeff, it's you. Wait, who's Patrick? Stop so careless as to be easily destroyed by the things of this world. Hey! Let's walk! Come over here! Okay, sounds good! Those things I let tell you that shall prove useful to you! Look at my fuck! Okay, let's see here! Looks like just a bunch of junk, actually! I got the junk in my truck, but I don't know what to do with it! I don't know what to do with it either! I got junk in my truck and I don't know what to do! Finally, it's about time I'm on this show. Oh my god, Tommy! Help! Ancient Dragon Sphere Emerald Necklace of Power, activate! Lend me all of your Dragon Sphere powers! Tommy! Dragon Sphere, go! Next. Our next question comes from Power12354, who says, my friend and I are trying to do a show like Fab. Can you guys tell me what kind of work goes into making Fobbies of Orange? Well, you can't watch any of the shows on Friday night. I mean, I missed countless episodes of Sabrina the Teenage Witch. So, it's a, it's a trade-off. Well, you have to have a year that you don't want to do anything on Thursdays or Fridays anymore. I mean, I um, hard work... Hard work? Hard work. I'm not sure if goes into really fab. Hard I'd work. Describe. Yeah, it's Probably. just like you get Skype and then you get Google Docs, which is free. Also Skype. And then you get a headset, which is not free. And then like you get friends. And then Good luck. You <laughs> No, nothing against you. I don't even know you. Anyway, um you you talk to them on the Skype thing. And then in Google Docs, it has like a little typey thing, then you go in there and you type it, you type up your script, and then you record it, or do it on radio if you have radio, which you probably don't. Basically, the most extensive work is um, split into, uh, there's the script writing, and then there's the preparing, like the music and putting everything up. Um, okay, well, so we all do the script writing, and then Ben is the one that's going to cue everything up. Um, so... After that's done, all that's left is to just do it, which is not really work. So. Prince who? Hey, what was the line? It's work for me. As shown by the multiple times I've screwed up guest lines. Yeah. Ben, what was that line? Nurse, this is your father. <laughs> Gunstar X writes, Tessie Watching is one of the most original songs in FAP. Are you guys going to make a longer version of it? Oh. No. Are you guys going to do a radio show for Mother 3 after the fan translation is released? We, we've kind of been tossing ideas around for maybe doing a Mother 3 something, but nothing's in stone yet. How did you come up with the pure awesomeness that is the Whir Jam? It wasn't ori originally uh, Come On and Whir or something. It was, some, I don't know, it was something else. Someone had written something or said something, and then I made some related rhyme to that, and then we all of a sudden, I think Ben was like, "Dude, we could do that," and then I was like, "What?" And then we somehow turned it into that. <laughs> that was very vague. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fun uh, lyric writing process, though. It was a good time. The writing was. that was probably the most extensive lyric writing we've done. It yeah. took a long time to write a parody to everything, like, yeah. and keep everything in. And rhyme and junk. The song's like four minutes long, so. It's true. Me, me, me. Is Trisha a he or a she? I mean, she can teleport. That's kind of odd. Or can he teleport? <gasps> dun dun dun! We know that Trisha is rich. So maybe she's like Batman and she just like has a bunch of really expensive toys. 
No, no, no. Actually, I think what the deal is is because what kind of she, toy is that? <laughs> she travels with Tommy, who is the hero of Earthbound. Like they are both superheroes. And so I think naturally, shut up. Yes, we are. They are the. They've been the heroes of Earthbound forever. We my question. Like yes, we have. Yeah, Dollar, we have. Uh, uh, Dollar, who uh, said, "Wow, those guys know how to be heroes." My there was a reason for that lie. When when did when did they become heroes? They've been heroes They've ever since uh, Talarama was like, this thing is entrusted to you, the saver of... Ancient Dragon Sphere Emerald Necklace of Power is what it was. I, I knew what it was. I but, was my, say. but what I'm confused with is, wasn't Tommy the random guy Yes. who yes. came up to Ness and was like, I just like seeing what people were up to or something like and that. And then we and decided was... to make him a hero when we got to yeah. the monkey cave. Of course, there's always the alternative answer that Ness just lied to Paula. It's true. It's true. Maybe there's something about Paula that makes her not able to bore for some other reason. I think it's because she smokes. It could be. It could be something. And maybe maybe you'll find glasses. out. Maybe you'll find out when Fab's over and we start Trisha and Tommy adventures. What's up, Ness? Ness? <clears throat> this is the wrong script, hold on. <laughs> I'm... not... dead. And... I'm not going to give up! Did you ever intend to do a scripted Mother One show, or are you just going to stick with that improv thing you got going on? Yeah, that um, one thing we do. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> and, uh... Martin is actually the biggest Lloyds fan there is. I'll I, let him explain. I love Lloyds, but, uh... I don't remember how we got the idea for Lloyds. But, I do! Uh, okay, we're going hey, to do... but... <laughs> huh? I want to guess till I got it. Oh, fine, go. Uh, that's too much time. Go okay. ahead. Um, well, Steve and George was unavailable, and um, it was up to us to sort of decide what to do. And it wasn't time to do a recap. And so like, a, a bunch of people were like, Ask a booby, ask a booby! And I was like, no, I hate ask a booby. So, Only like, that. But like, this is about the time when like people were like clamoring for us to do more than just Earthbound. And so I figured, like, okay, this is a horrible idea, because, like, none of us have really played the game that much. I mean, I've beaten it, and I still don't remember that much about it. Except Muhammad. Yeah, since you're, like, the mother one staffer yeah. up in her. He knows all about it. And, like, we had always talked, and, like, people had asked us a bunch of times, like, if we were ever going to try to do a completely improvised show. And, like, I said no, because I thought it would be a horrible idea. But... Apparently, if you put together two really bad ideas, you get a great one, as is the case with Lloyds Are Not Christmas. Yes, kids. <laughs> what you want to do is wrap your head in duct tape and go rob a general store. <laughs> because thievery is a bad idea. And wrapping your head in duct tape is a bad idea. You see. But if you do that, you will be successful. But, you know, think of it this way. They might think you're retarded. <laughs> they might give you the money and say, give us to your charity. There you go. Go, Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> what was the question? Oh. I don't know. <laughs> Script another one. So yeah, no. And our last question from Gunstar X is, Why in God's name is Paula not just blown Trisha's head off? She had no trouble shooting Ness. That's true. That, that's... I don't know. I don't know why... Well, I mean, she tried to kill Trisha once. She did. She pushed her off a helicopter. Yeah, and somehow she survived that. So, maybe... Trish, or maybe Paula just has accepted that Trisha cannot be killed. It's true. I mean, the heroes can't die, right? And our last question comes from Ranger. Can you wash me? Seriously, what was that about? What is wrong with you guys? Your mommy always tells you that it's important to take showers so you don't get the plague. So, you should do that. 
especially after being in a trash can. And Ninten was around, and he has a hand that, you know, the hand in Lloyd's Are Not Christmas has done a lot. Yeah, I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> <laughs> I can, I can, oh God, I can, I can say something serious about this. Go ahead. Um, yeah, serious about Lloyd's. Here's the thing that bothers me. The can you wash me thing, I mean, is Lloyd's asking a serious question. Or, not Lloyd's, Lloyd, asking a serious question. Can Ninten wash him? Now, Ninten is retarded. I don't know why people haven't picked up on that, but um, to create a romantic thing between a retarded child and an eccentric garbage boy, that's wrong. <laughs> That's against everything ever. You can't do that. So for all the really creepy people that like to make fan art between Nintendo and Lloyd, no. <laughs> stop. You're only hurting me, so stop. With, with my spit? Yes. This will accomplish the goal of getting them not to do that. Well done. <laughs> I know. I know that they're going to create so Hey okay, guys, be sure not great. to log into my forum account. My password is... Bojangles. <laughs> There's okay. going to be so many login attempts to, to your account. <laughs> Boj How do you spell Bojangles? <laughs> I don't know. Bill Cosby. What do you think? I don't know. Richard Nixon. <laughs> 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 Why don't we talk like this? Well, shoot, I don't know. <laughs> Grab that gun off the wall. Let's go to McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> Before we go, wrap your head in duct tape. Bear! Metal! And then they go through each member of the family. It's like, Daddy Bear, he plays the bass. He's going to get up right in your face. And it's like, And then it goes back to the theme song. And then it's like, Sister Bear, she's electric guitar. She's going to show you. She'd go really far. Mama, she's real stupid and plays the guitar. For some odd reason, she has a guitar. And then she plays that. And then the boy has the drums. He's like, Speed Boy likes to do speed and play the drums. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, God. Oh, God. That sounds like the best thing ever made by human fan. You realize that's, that's going to be the stinger, right? <laughs> yeah. Bear! <laughs> Metal! <laughs> Family! <laughs> Listening to Radio PSI Friday night with me, DJ Nana DJ. Let's close it out with some bear metal family on Radio PSI. Listen to Black Eater next. Shreds his